Welcome everyone to this session on community and partnerships by TomTom. My name is Natasha and during this session I'll be sharing some introductions to you on some of our team and on TomTom Tom itself, followed by a brief look at the complexity of today's world in mapping it and sharing some highlights on how we have been engaging and contributing to the different OSM communities around the world so far. Salim is our Global Community and Partnerships Manager, overseeing many of our activities. Some of you have perhaps already been in contact with him, and myself overseeing the East Asia Pacific region. If you're on the Discord platform, you're welcome to reach out to us at any time. This slide uh, shows a few more of our team members dispersed across the East Asia Pacific region, each of them interacting with the different and local OSM communities. TomTom Tom has uh, well over 30 years of experience in the mapping industry, starting from the first handheld GPSs a long time ago, and now transitioned to products and APIs for traffic and location-based services, as well as mobile apps now as well. We spread well across the world with at least approximately 3,700 um, employees. From this slide, you'll be able to see what the vision um, of us is to map the world in real time as our end users now expect. And our mission is to build the smartest, most useful map on the planet for many people to benefit from. As we all know, the world continues to grow and become ever more diverse and complex. To keep pace with reality is a challenge for all of us. And as this illustration shows, there's also a lot of data out there for us to work with. Through our experience, we have come to see that it will take the world to map the world through collaboration. With this, TomTom Tom has embarked on a new course towards making this a reality. With this new course, we are engaging with the OSM communities through a number of different ways. That being hosting map editing parties and events, attending state-of-the-map conferences, passing on our mapping experience through community training, joining collaboration groups, sharing data and resources to the communities, and launching OSM map improvement projects. We'll share a few highlights on each of these categories over the next few slides. Here you'll see a few pictures from our OSM meetups across the cities that we've had so far. Cities such as Sydney, Taipei, Pune, Bangkok, and South Korea as a few examples. And they've been re received very successfully so far. In Taiwan, we have been joining with the wiki map, the wiki data mapping monthly meetups and co-hosting events with a POI team in Indonesia, as well as participating in OSM surveys in Malaysia, just to name a few. And on this slide, you will see a number of state of the map events that we have attended or about to be attending, such as the state of the map Asia coming up in November and we've helped uh, sponsor as much as we can in each one of them. We have also been reaching out to help train and develop new communities for RSM, as we can see in some examples here on the slides. So we've helped um, 
provide laptops and training towards groups in Brazil, as well as in different parts of Africa as well, such as Tanzania and Ghana as well, empowering local women there as well. Furthermore, we are reaching out to help communities after natural disasters. So partnering with Hot OSM, we have helped um, after the earthquake in Turkey, providing uh, some of our employees helping out in that space. And also after the recent earthquake that happened in Morocco as well editing on some of the projects that you can see on the slide there as well. And furthermore to this in Korea, we've also joined with OSM events to help communities as and where is needed. So in these cases, we have um, people that are based in Korea helping out in other countries in Africa, uh, wherever that need is there. In collaboration, we have also joined the OSM Foundation to be able to get a closer look at the needs of the community and to see where we can better help in the future. So on this slide, you'll be able to see some of our employees that are filling certain roles within the foundation, um, providing that direct support for them. And as also shared a bit previously in other presentations, we're also building large partnerships so that we can be able there to help build a better map together for the future. From all of this knowledge and interaction, we are trying to find ways that we can also provide back to the community some of our data. Um, so in this example here, you can see tools that we are developing such as Roadrunner, which is a platform whereby a community can access some of our probe data and use that to capture geometry um, or to verify uh, existing geometry that needs to be changed. And further to this, we've also developed map APIs and SDK uh, kits for developers who are out there who want to use the data to then build on extra services or for any other projects that they have. And these are accessible through, uh, as you can see, a number of free transactions um, and also unlimited apps for the mobile. And we have a free uh, navigation app called Amigo that's available for anyone to download and use our map. Moving uh, towards wrapping up, um, we've also launched projects for improvements of the OSM map across 196 countries so far. That includes uh, well across the, the world, as you can see, including a number of countries within the Oceania region as well. And that's helping the communities to edit, but also our editing teams helping that map be improved as well. On this slide, you'll be able to see some of the map roulette challenges that we have also um, set up and pushed to the community that helps have a look at things like fixing and building um, highway intersections, adding water areas, connecting isolated highways, just to name a few, and the list uh, continues over there which has been really well received by the Oceania community, which has been good to see. And here also on this side, you can see another country example, such as New Zealand, uh, which has also got a number of map roulette challenges, which we have pushed to the community um, and also well received in New Zealand. All right. Thank you very much for listening today. If you have any questions uh, or you see an opportunity 
um, that TomTom Tom can help in your project or what you're working on, uh, please reach out to myself or to Salim. Uh, there are email addresses. Um, or you can also come by the um, sponsor table there and uh, have a chat. Hello, good morning. Uh, just want to ask, uh, so far, because you, you explained that you've, you've been working with uh, several communities in, in many countries, I just want to know that, is there any like uh, uh, challenges that you have encountered regarding the community and partnership? Uh, like, like what kind of challenges that you, you have at, at this point working with them and, and how exactly to address that kind of challenge that you have found? Thank you. Thanks for the question, it's a, a good one. Yes, we've encountered uh, a range of responses, so communities have been positive uh, from our engagement. Others have not been as much, uh, mostly because of us coming in as a company. Um, so we've been really trying to overcome that hurdle. Um, in some communities, we found that the most vocal are actually not the local community but foreigners in some way that are uh, aware of the OSN uh, map and they are the ones that are vocal towards us. And so in those cases, we've actually looked at other alternatives um, to engage directly with the local community. So we're going to universities, um, those who are interested in mapping um, and t training them um, so that the local community is the one directly that we're contacting in the local language as well rather than um, uh, foreigners who might be based in the country. Okay, um, I think one thing that, uh, like the, the, the poster you showed, like I think one hesitation with uh, communities engaging with private companies would be working with someone different after a few months or after a year it, because it's very, very, uh, what do you call that? The turnover of people becomes very fast. Um, my question maybe might be related with, um, is there a way like such companies like TomTom, Tom, Grab, or things like that would be able to have that more uh, not too flexible of changes uh, in that matter or maybe uh, members of the company could be part of the actual community so that even after their engagement with Tonto, there's still that uh, relationship. Or are there measures that Tonto uh, would be employing at that point? That's definitely one thing we're very mindful of. Um, so that's why we have a dedicated team directly to engaging with the community. So, so I introduced them, um, Salim, as the main person who reached out to uh, mostly, um, and then we start a transition period uh, to a, a person who's locally based in the country. So the slide that I had out from the world, uh, which showed you a, a brief snapshot of um, different people that are actually based in the, in the country itself, and they will be the ones that will take the long-term relationship and directly communicate with the uh, communities themselves um, in the local language or as English Does that mean that you would actually um, advertise um, vacancies for people to work for your team in that country? Is that one way that you could um, target local people? Or do you prefer to uh, take people on board from elsewhere, train them up, and then send them to those other countries? Yeah, so TomTom is a global company, so by nature, even before we were interacting with OSN communities, we were based in many local countries. Um, so that's why those events that were held were actually with TomTomers directly in those environments, uh, sorry, countries. None of them flew in. Um, so we, we, are, we are trying to use employees in the countries directly with the communities themselves. 
Unfortunately, we'd love to be in every country, um, but uh, I think financially that's not feasible at the moment. But uh, as much as we can, we're in the most prominent countries we can be locally. wanted to ask a question because Tom Tong, uh, the name Tom Tong for me is still related to the navigation device that you used to have in your car. I've still got a Tom Tong, um, but that um, has gone, that industry of needing a GPS that you move between vehicles has gone because vehicles usually now have an onboard GPS. Mm. So that must have had quite a dramatic effect on Tom Tong's production. Yeah. It's uh, interesting how that's uh, one reputation we've always carried with us in trying to overcome, but we're still in that space, but um, we've really expanded more to partner with companies. So, for example, in the mobile space, we will partner with other companies providing the map for them to do their services. Okay. And, uh, and, your and also automot automotive as well. So many cars, the map that you see in the car the back end is actually TomTom. Tom. Okay. So we, we on different platforms, just not uh, as visible as usually on the, the old PND. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and the, uh, the, the mobile app you were talking about, so yes, we've got, if you go to Google Play and search for Amigo, um, that's our app um, providing the free navigation to people. And is that subscriber-based or it's, it's just a downloadable app? It's just a downloadable app of our map. Okay. Um, to use. Right, good. Yes. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any more questions? No. Thank you. Please extend your thanks once again. To <laughs> and we won't be starting. 